e ma le ni be yen o ni le loko e siku dede asiko yi hello everyone it's aderonke again i hope your day is going well loni mo fe soro nipa oro yi yoruba ati nkan to tumo si orisirisi oro kun gba kun gbe lati gbo nipa oro na tori oye ta won eyo de nini awon kan ni eleyi awon kan ni ton sugbon loni mo fe yono no e mo fe salaye ko le ye wa ye keke today i like to talk about the word yoruba and what it means we've heard so much rubbish <laughs> especially within the past two or three years about what it means and i'm going to analyze the words that have been suggested and i'm going to i suppose talk about it more explain it as well as i can to begin with so that there's no confusion at all yoruba is a yoruba word very clear made up of yoruba words so yoruba word made up of yoruba words but explaining the word and analyzing the word is not so much my focus we i will do that but it's not so much my focus as what the misinformation and the debate that has been occurring that we've been having regarding the word what it highlights the more serious issues that it highlights because the debate is on yoruba today tomorrow it can be any other word <laughs> so i'd like to analyze it as well as i can and provide as much information that will prevent something like this a debate of this kind from occurring in the future and the misinformation that has occurred regarding the word from duplicating itself in the future in a different context first of all the discussion shows that many yoruba people pay very little or no attention to their own words they instead look for equivalents in other languages and adopt the other languages meanings ideals and culture the word is yoruba today tomorrow it might be something else as long as we continue to pay little attention to what our own words are saying in and of themselves not only will we remain ignorant we would also not be able to evolve as a people because i suppose the language is the central point <laughs> of any ethnic group so we don't do that we don't look at what our words are saying in and of themselves our words are a record and the act of breaking words down to know what they are actually saying compared to the english translations that were slapping on them is lacking in a general culture i would like to highlight this playlist in that regard this in and of itself playlist i've done some words but i intend to do more eshe for instance is not thank you if you look at what the word is saying in and of itself it's not thank you what the what the phrase aje is not which if you look at what the word is saying in and of itself you would know oba is not king it's not queen neither is olori by the way i haven't done that but i was ori is not head if you look at what the word is in and of itself then you would know you know we are not really paying attention to the words and the meanings that they contain for example <laughs> just so that i can make that make sense what is she talking about what is she saying what do you mean by we are not looking at what words are saying for instance with ori ori the o there is a noun maker ri is a verb this is the noun maker that is slapped to the verb to make it a noun that is placed onto <laughs> not necessarily slapped onto placed onto the o here is the thing that or the thing that is used to ri is c extensively could be experience or discover or find or visit or attend to you know so the thing that is used to see is actually the thing that we used to experience that we used to experience this sphere that is called earth is what ori is is why our ancestors named it ori if we just say okay this head what is ori in yoruba what is head in yoruba ori 
that is what we call it but the word itself has an even deeper meaning that con connects us to our ancestry to what our ancestors thought about the head than just thinking of oh head and adopting the english meaning ideal and approach to the head you know so that uh, and that is just one word out of how many words that are in our vocabulary we don't really look at them in depth for what they're telling us for what our ancestors are telling us through them or for the history that they contain the beauty the depth that they contain you know so that's one thing to keep in mind for instance bo and abo abo is what we call play i don't know if this is lagging oh well abo is what we call plate and when you break it down to the noun maker and the verb a is the noun maker bo is the verb bo is to feed which extensively could also be nurture or provide for nurture or but at, at its basic level it's feed i've noted here that there's a major difference between using or speaking yoruba for communication and comprehending yoruba a person can use yoruba without necessarily comprehending it you may know that this is what the Yoruba call plate, and you may call it that, but you may not necessarily comprehend the word and what it means in and of itself. So that is one thing. I'm trying to go through the, the stages of how we got here in the first place to think that we would believe anything regarding our own words that we don't even understand what they are telling us in and of themselves it this yoruba name or whatever debate it highlights a more serious issue abo that we call plate what is plate in and of itself we've analyzed what abo is in and of itself what is plate when you analyze what plate is you will clearly see that abo is in fact not the same thing as plate plate came from plat the old french plat as in platter plat plat came from the medieval latin platter they got it from the greeks platus so platus which means flat became platter <laughs> platter became plat plat became plate so when you say something like flat plate you know is a tautology it doesn't make sense because plat or plate already means flat <laughs> so do we take time to even look at these words uh, this is our official language in nigeria by the way <laughs> if it's your official language you must at least have at the basic level some knowledge of what it really is and why why you're using it why it has become your official language but how many people can honestly say that when they said flat plate they knew that they were saying flat flat <laughs> not many people so yeah a significant portion of the english vocabulary comes from romans and latinate sources estimates of native words derived from old english range from 20 to 33 percent with the rest made up of outside borings a portion of these borings come directly from latin or through one of the romance languages particularly Ang anglo norman and french but also some from italian portuguese and spanish or from other languages such as gothic frankish or greek so the language itself especially considering the fact that we tend to even put english over yoruba in especially in our educational systems and in our so-called professional settings they say wear english wears only come with your own wares on fridays or weekends or some other irrelevant day and we say oh english is the only language that you're allowed to speak in here and things it's good that it's the official language that binds us but when there's such a bias against your own language then that's another problem you know the language is not original 
<laughs> to put it simply, to be as nice as possible. We don't learn the roots of the words that we use, what they mean and how they impact us. And the reason I'm saying this is because of, you know, the, the clear preference. 99% of the English, even the English, do not know what their own words originally meant. So if you say cat, what does cat mean? They know that cat is what they call the animal, but they cannot genuinely tell you what cat is in and of itself or where it came from without having to check a dictionary to find the language that they borrowed it from. So that's an issue. Latin, French, German, Dutch, Greek. These are languages that if you want to know what the English language really is and you want to know what it is in depth, you would have to learn all these languages. And how many English people can speak Greek or Latin or French or German? So they don't know. It's the word. They are the words that they use. The word cat they use and other English words, but they cannot honestly tell you what it is in and of itself. They just use it. Let's not do that to the Yoruba language because with the Yoruba language, we can clearly, especially with nouns, the verbs, yeah, but especially with nouns, even the verbs you can tell based on the tones, and I've covered it in one of my Yoruba lessons for beginners videos, even the tones tell you something. But more importantly, if you see a word, especially if it's a noun, the central verb there or the central adjective there or the central adverb there will tell you more. That's the beauty of the Yoruba language. So English is not all that, you know, but there's a self-deprecating, low self-esteem thing, you know, about, about us that really needs to change. The second thing that it highlights is that many Yoruba people do not care to research their own genuine history. They can tell you <laughs> what happened to the 44th king of Judah. <laughs> they can read the Bible obsessively and what happened in Mecca in the year 1101. <laughs> but are very ignorant about their myopic ideas and how they were passed on to them and how their collective growth is stunted, how our collective growth is stunted as a result. A lot of people still don't know anything about the transatlantic slave trade. They don't know anything about genocides or religious cleansings or slavery or colonization, both internal and external. They have no clue. So they would not only believe anything. If you know your own histories and somebody says, this is what your word means, somebody that is not an authority over your language just walks up to you one day and tells you this is what your word means because you don't know yourself you will believe it <laughs> because because you will believe anything you don't know anything. you can argue over what happened to king david <laughs> during his reign because you've done your research and you found out you can even swear on your father's life that this was what happened to king david and Bathsheba, or this was what happened to to aisha or muhammad but you cannot say one thing about the the second king of your own because you've not searched and you don't care to know you don't care to know so that's that's an issue when you don't know yourself you will believe anything you believe anything. That's another core issue that this matter has highlighted. Also, when you don't know yourself, you will defend your ignorance to the death and you also allow yourself to be mistreated and lied to. Like I've said earlier, you believe anything, you believe any lies. If you see your child with Didi, if you see somebody with braids, you will say, ah, this person has gone rotten or this person is bad because you don't know <laughs> anything about your own ancestors. The fact that hair braiding is not, well, at least before colonization, it was never just an only female thing in the culture. Men had braids in their hair. Shango <laughs> used to wear beautiful braids. Um, Shuku, in fact, Shango liked Shuku, especially even on women. He loved to see it on women. But 
if you don't know that, if you see if your child suddenly comes home one day <laughs> and he has, you will say, yaya kuya. You don't know anything about your own answer. You don't have a, a solid, genuine concept of what is good and what is bad. So how exactly are you going to evolve as a people? Why why won't SAS associate braids on men with <laughs> criminality? Because they have no clue. They don't know their own history. About mistreatment, there's just so much. I was watching some videos, you know, but there are lots more of this nature. Just people being mistreated or allowing themselves to be mistreated just for sheer ignorance. You take the Orisha of the Arabs of the jews of the this and you put them over your own answer you take their own ancestors these were people that lived like you and i that have now been deified you left your own ancestors and you began to defend as as a matter of fact even brutalize one another <laughs> in the defense of some other person's ancestor or some other person's culture some people will swear that they are children of israel there's nothing you can tell them this they can swear <laughs> that they are children of israel go to israel and go and tell them that you are a child of israel they will not ask you where you're from originally or who your who your ancestors were <laughs> go to Israel and tell them that you're a child of Israel and see how they'll look at you. Or go to Egypt and tell them the Egyptian you have seen today, you will see them no more. And see what they will do to you. Ignorance. You just... Dogmatism. These are some of the issues that these things highlight. The third thing... This is going to be a rather long video because I'm going to analyze everything. I may not have the opportunity to do it some other day, but I'm going to say everything that I think about this and everything that I think has contributed to the fact that people are so gullible that they will believe anything. The third thing is many Yoruba people cannot confidently decipher between words that are theirs and the ones that are not. And that's the danger of unnecessary word learning. As a matter of fact, this Yoruba Koshe Yoruba issue came as a result of unnecessary word learning. Unnecessarily, unnecessarily learning words sort of has a, a part in the confusion, which I'll analyze when I get there. Wala is not a Yoruba word. What is Wala? Wala came from the Arabic word Wala. Alafia is not a Yoruba word. It's Arabic. Alafia. Adura is Adua. When Islamization occurred, and again, you have to learn about your own history and how Islam came into present day Nigeria and the circumstances and how the language began to infuse itself into our own language, or people began to put those languages over our own. In these videos, Amma is not a Yoruba word. Abela is not a Yoruba word. Albarka is not a Yoruba word. But people, many people don't know that. You, we don't know ourselves. Learn words are only great when you don't have equivalents for them in your language. When you do and you're starting to forget your own words. Putting Arabic words over your own words or, you know, whatever. Things like this would happen, you know. Let's assess the ridiculousness and illogicality of it all. I think that's really crucial. If I wake up tomorrow <laughs> and I say, Igbo people come over here. The Yoruba people named you because Igbo <laughs> actually makes sense in Yoruba. Bo is a verb. It means to blow with the head. E, here is the noun maker, which would translate to the thing that, or the person that, or the persons that one. By the way, that is why this animal is called Agbo, because it does this with the head. It, it knocks with the head, it blows with the head. 
<laughs> I bet many people have never thought about that. Um, Igbo. So if I say, ah, Yoruba people name the Igbo, and it means the person that one blows with the head, and we actually name them, and do you think they're going to believe me? <laughs> do you think they would be gullible enough or stupid enough to believe it? let alone spread it around on their blogs and publicize it. This was how the Igbo name came to be. Do you, do you think, one, they are either going to ignore me or they are going to curse me out. <laughs> oh, you berry bay. They will call me and curse me out and, you know, uh, they will say, Zukwani <laughs> Kedia. And they will insult me. And they, because they are, or they will just say, oh, tch. Ignore that stupid Yoruba girl. I know that Yoruba girl has gone mad again. They would just insult me and go. They would, they would bluff me off because they know themselves, I suppose. That is why they would not believe it. Ausa actually means something in Yoruba. Ausa, 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 if you break it down, the other would be the thin person or persons that is or that who or who who yes but you can also say who who is to dig out or pull out from the ground sa is run so if i say ausa i'm saying the person that one digs out and runs so which may infer that it's a disgusting thing or it's a rotten thing or it's a scary thing something anyway that one digs out and runs on the other hand it could also be the person that is dug out and runs at the very same time it could also be that so things like this would always depend on the context at the very same time it could also be the person that is dug out and runs which would be coward so if i come out tomorrow and i say i will say people come over here we named you and this is in fact what your name means do you think that it will be gullible enough to believe me they will just curse me out <laughs> Metro, the igbos will say there. the the igbo will say the um Aousa will say uh damburoba shege they will just come here and insult me and go they will they won't even pay me any mind in fact but if they do they will just insult because they they know themselves they know they know that that is i'm just bluffing by the way i i have a dictionary of so i have a, an outside dictionary here that sort of i don't know attempts to define what ausa is let me show you i have so many ausa resources here that i know what to do with i have too much i've, I've been kind of trying to learn the language at the same time too just for the fun of it so i have like so many resources and self-learning materials here. I don't know why this is not loading. So many self uh, teaching materials here to use. Why is this not loading? Anyway, I think this one wants to load. Anyway, this is, this is, this is where I want to check it from. And I think they defined Aousa as, I think tongue or speech or a remotely conceivable explanation of the word Aousa is that it derived from Aousa, a king of Egypt who promoted the worship of Estart in Egypt. The Bonuis people have a tradition that they and the Aousas are descended from a son of Aousa who was of Phoenician origin and made a great expedition into the country of the blacks. A worship resembling that of blah blah blah. So I think they I think the attempt to, I think maybe it just means tongue. I think, I don't know how true this is, but that's what is here. But anyway, at least they have a concept of their own history. Even if it's Aousa, even if it is tongue, at least they know what, who they are. They won't believe me. They will just bluff me off. If I just say Aousa, they won't believe that. Worry is another one. Worry sounds exactly like worry in Yoruba. What is worry in Yoruba? It's a contraction of wo and ori. Wo and ori. Wo ori. Enter head. 
enter head so if i make a video tomorrow and i say worry people come over here oh. now we name you oh. we gave you your name oh. worry means enter head and that means and that would sort of insinuate the people that one understands or easily understood people so if i say now we name, and this is what your name means oh it's not an insult so they may not necessarily <laughs> it doesn't sound like an insult but they would they will still they will still give me i will still collect <laughs> my body will go do what the what the <laughs> so i me too i won't i won't do that i can't i can't wake up tomorrow morning and do that because one they won't believe me too <laughs> they're not they tell person so you know i be then they tell person <laughs> so the gullibility that is being reflected here is really concerning because it means we will believe anything one irrelevant nuisance just woke up one morning and said that yoruba is this particular Aousa word and yoruba people believed it and began to share it on their blogs this is the true history of the name yoruba and i was like ah we are fourfu we are depe. We are go. <laughs> because you believe anything. And this is why I know that <laughs> this is a major problem. Every language has at least one word that sounds like or looks like something else in a different language. Again, remember, it's Yoruba today. In another 10 years, it might be another word. And the gullibility is concerning. If we believe it now, there's a chance that we would believe it then. You know, we have to be careful as a people, especially for the fun of it. Every language has at least one word that sounds like or looks like something else in a different language. Since you are gullible and you would believe anything. Okay. The, the Yoruba language did not exist before colonization. It was the English that taught us Yoruba. Joke is actually joke in Yoruba. It was the English that gave us the word joke. Kola is actually what became Kola. You're that gullible. Kola is actually Kola. Desire is where we got Desiree from. Ale is where we got Ale from. The drink or Ale, the drink. Shade is where we got Shade from. Shade Or is where we got Ore from. Akin is where we got Akin from. Or is where we got away from. Bala is where we got Bola from. Then you're about to the Bagbubon Kogbo. If you don't know yourself, <laughs> if you spend years learning about some other person's ancestor <laughs> and you ignore your own language and your own ancestry, some things like this would happen. It's your about today, tomorrow it will be another word. Since your the claim is that the Aosa gave us the <laughs> gave us the word Yoruba. Okay. Kao which means bring in yoruba sounds similar to kawo kawo kabiesio that we say in as part of the oriki of shungo you can even say but just basically kawo basically means come and see or let us see shawusa no lo tu fwani kawo kabiesio that man sota banki shango kawo toje count money kawo that is count money did we get that from Kao too? Kala or Kala in Aosa, which is palm rib, sounds similar to Kala in Yoruba, which is bimin. Shausa no lo fun ane Kala. She anti maso Kala tele Kao ki awo Aosa to be resini be peluwa. Did the Aosa give us Kala too? Komi, which sounds very similar to Komi in Yoruba. Komi is everything in Aosa. Komi is park fizzes in Yoruba. Ba komi, nothing. Or komi, everything. Komi in Yoruba is park fizzes. Shawusa no lotufu ani komi. 
when you do Papa de la Lance and Dollar will love one come here to the ah, I will sign you, love one lady, wow, I tear bunk at my eye, but do. Cotowa, I won't go go love one, you will bunk. You will believe anything. This, this is a very serious problem. Ike in Igbo sounds similar to Ike in Yoruba. Who gave who? <laughs> she, who gave who gave the other? Shawa la fa won egbo ni ike ton lo gege bi agbara tabashe did we give the igbo ike ewu in igbo sounds similar to ewu in yoruba who gave did is it not pure coincidence did we give them or did they give us oyi in yoruba is it's tough oyi in igbo oyi na tumo baby ya de kachiko did we give them oyi? If I wake up tomorrow and I say oyi is actually uh, oyi in Igbo, that the Yoruba oyi is actually oyi in Igbo, would they believe me? Would they not curse me out because they are not that gullible? D in Yoruba is block. D in Igbo is husband. Would they believe dalu in Igbo? Sounds similar to dalu in Yoruba. Would they believe shoronio? The gullibility is really, really concerning. Really, really concerning. Next, let's <laughs> review the words that are being thrown around. I, I went through some blogs and some posts and some really a lot of rubbish and a lot of complete waste of my time. I did more research <laughs> than I needed to, uh, but these are the words that I've seen being thrown around as the words that Yoruba was gotten from. The self-deprecation here, again, it's really concerning because it means we don't know ourselves enough to understand our language and to know what came from what. If you go to some, it, it even reflects in other ways, politically, socially, the self-deprecation matter. If you see, if, some people see a new child crying a black baby on instagram and i've seen it a lot especially with many yoruba people they would laugh and say the baby is crying because they were born in africa or sometimes they'll say the baby is crying because they were born in nigeria they wish they were born whites abroad ah after waking up and real realizing they were born in this some would even say god forsaken country the 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 self debric you can't move forward that way politically socially mentally psychologically you can't move forward that way when everything is about self deprecation the self hatred is really really real and it reflects in many ways the hatred of the skin that is reflected in bleaching the hatred of the accent <laughs> that is re reflected in the well i suppose one I have to be sensitive because there's this idea that it gives you a better chance in life but some people will literally beat their own children for speaking Yoruba because they want them to sound British as British as possible which self-hatred anyway let's let's look at these words <laughs> word for word and let's see what they mean in relation to what people are saying you know just for the fun of it. again i did more research than i need to <laughs> and now i feel like i need to teach it the yeah here can be a third person singular indicator it has so many homonymal tendencies which i'll show you soon you may also see yeah like this and it may be one characterized by or associated with i'll show you so the yeah is so versatile but i'll show you the other meanings and also if you want any of the links that i have <laughs> i'll probably put it in the comment section anyway but if you want any of the links to my research just ask let's see what let's see the meanings that yeah could have because i think the homonymal tendencies mix it of the word makes it so versatile and it can appear in many different ways okay so you can see here yeah can be third person it can be like it can be yeah as in daughter 
Yashew, daughter of the Shew. You know, you can also see this. You can see it being used as an exclamation. It could also be, especially among the Kanuri, it can also be elder sister. It can be this. It can. So it has, it has a lot of homonymal tendencies. Anyway, but in the context that we want to discuss, it could be the something or the one associated with something you can say it with or without the r again using latin letters is is a bit more flexible on their end because a jami is still quite dominant in how they write in many parts especially as a result of you know the intense uh islamic colonization there or let me say fulani colonization of sorts so yeah i will show you what the words that have been suggested mean and how they can't possibly be how you know self-deprecating it is that somebody will go out of their way to find outside words that have com complete nothing to do with us and start to liken it to our own yoruba words in order to break themselves down you know it's really a shame yariba is one of the ones that i've seen riba is prophet but it's i with the way that i've seen it being used and the sent example sentences that i've seen i think it's been used in the unlawful game sense so this is where the one saying oh yariba actually yoruba actually came from yariba this is where they are getting it from riba is um indeed unlawful profit in and of itself but especially unlawful gain and that's why they they came up with the one who acquires unlawful gain cheat scammer and the, the stupid people that have gone out of their way to look for hausa words in order to break themselves down because they don't think <laughs> this is where they got yariba from another one that is going around is Yaraba or Yarabi and Raba or Rabi is divide or separate or distribute. So if you say Yarabi, the one associated with distribution, best case scenario, maybe something like distributor or judge or something, you know, but in the negative sense, the way that these people are <laughs> translating it as they are saying that Yoruba came from Yarabi or Yaraba which would mean something like the black sheep, the instigator, the troublemaker. So the people that have gone out of their way to say, you right came from Yaraba or Yarabi, this is where they're getting it from. Another one <laughs> is Yaruba. <laughs> this thing is funny to me. I, I, I don't know. It's wow. Yaruba. Ruba is, can be empty threat in Shokoto, but in general, it's like a false statement which causes alarm. So, especially something that is a lie that you used to frighten off, you know. So, to go bad can also be riba or ruba. To go bad, you know. So, the the people that have gone out of their way to look, to look for this word and say this is where Yoruba came from are now saying that what Yoruba actually means is liars or bad rotten people. They've gone out <laughs> of their way to look for something that has nothing to do with them or, or, or the language, which is not only funny, again, but concerning. Banza is another one. Some people say, oh, it came from Ya Banza. Or oh, for those who don't have, like, who don't know how to say Z. <laughs> ya Banza. Banza Fula. So this one, this one has Fulani roots, I think, especially since it's indicated here, means vain or useless or worthless or evil or without reward. And so the vain, worthless one or the evil one, the the ones that have gone out of their way to say Yoruba, <laughs> Yoruba Wayato, si Yabanza. Anyway, the ones that have gone out of their way to say Yoruba came from Yabanza are using a word that has nothing to do with them as a yardstick. <laughs> for what Yoruba means again problematic this is what the Aousa actually call us because I went to some 
blogs and some I watched some videos ya bawa is what they actually call us bawa is slave bauta is the is slavery so bawa is the baiwa is female slave baiwa could also be generosity <laughs> so um it could be the ones associated with general it's up to the outside people to tell us <laughs> why they call us yabawa is it intentional or not you know but i don't know do they mean baiwa as in generosity and gifts you know the ones associated with generosity or do they mean these but that's not so much the concern now the concern now is the yoruba people that are coming to this word and ignoring the homonymo tendencies that it has going worst case scenario and saying oh the word you they're not even saying oh the ourselves call us that and this is what they are saying categorically that this is where the word yoruba came from again which is concerning yabawa would be something like one associated with slavery worst case scenario which is where those people are getting it from or something like daughter of a slave or of or like a slave or something you know so this is where they're getting it from so you know i i i don't know i don't know which of the baiwa is it is it actually bawa is different from baiwa so i think this is what it is because especially since this is how they write it by and this is how they pronounce it too i don't think it is generosity so i i think it says so i guess it's time for if you're of outside ancestry and you speak the language well and you're watching <laughs> if you want to tell us why we're being called yabawa we will be grateful <laughs> is it due to genuine inability to say yoruba or is it intentional that we're being called yabawa is it genuine misinterpretation or is it intentional it's none of my business really and it's not of our business <laughs> but you know it's it would be good to know yoruba let's go to the word itself now that we've analyzed the causes for the the underlying factors that have contributed to the confusion and the words that are being thrown around <laughs> has where yoruba came from let's talk about yoruba itself let's now analyze the word yoruba is an old word made up of combined words that a group in present day or your state were known as and collectively identified themselves as before Samuel Ajayi Crowder and nationalists spread its use in the 19th and 20th centuries to foster a common identity within what we now know as Southwest Nigeria. So the Ifes were the Ifes, the Egbas were the Egbas, the Jebus were the Jebus, the Ondos were the, were the Ondos the jishas with the we the badgers with the badgers <laughs> we, we didn't share this common identity until the 19th century when it was promoted so it this is actually the name of a certain people that lived in present day or your states within the or your kingdom known they were known as the yoruba people it wasn't a collective name samuel samuel ajaye crowder is from Oshog in Oyo, but it's from Oyo anyway. He, I think the Oshogun people were known as, were under that collective Yoruba people identity when it was just them that was using that identity. The Oshogun also knew them. The people from Oshogun, that, re, that town, also knew themselves as Yoruba people, which was why it chose to use the name Yoruba as the collective name for everybody because that's what his own it's just personal preference that's what his own people were known as and so he just chose to popularize that as the collective name for everybody well especially for documentation purposes too because he translated the the english bible to yoruba and the first dictionary he published so for doc 
maybe initially before the before nationalist thoughts began to seep in or became more evident um maybe genuinely was just to re record his own people's language but within his lifetime he personally did promote it as the general name for everybody the everybody the egbas the jebus the egba people were the last <laughs> i'd like to say among the last just to be safe <laughs> but the egba people were the last to accept Yoruba as their collective name and I've confirmed this through a lot of voyager or traveler accounts from the 1800s again I've read too much more than really concerns me and I've found a lot of interesting things that I did not know but something something like this I found this front uh, page of this account some of them are not really formally published like this but the ones that are tend to look like this this is one of them and it's a pilgrimage to my motherland an account of a journey among the egbas and yorubas of central africa so we know that as at 1860 the egbas <laughs> still had not accepted the collective name yoruba this was published in 1861 if you are an african-american and you're trying to look into um, the people who have actually coming to present-day Nigeria from uh, America to reset so people of African ancestry then I suppose uh, Robert Campbell might interest you and I chose him particularly because I thought Jamaica Campbell <laughs> isn't related to Naomi at all but Robert Campbell was a Jamaican born printer journalist and teacher who along with Mart Martin Robinson Delaney made up the Niger River Exploring, Exploring Party of 1959 to 1960, an expedition organized by free African Americans to explore the possibility of colonizing parts of West Africa with black immigrants from America. I don't know if colonizing is the word per se, but returning <laughs> to West Africa, <laughs> this is the wrong word. I don't know who wrote this. This is the wrong word. I just took a screenshot anyway. Uh, West Africa with black immigrants from America. Campbell traveled first to England in early 1859. He sailed on to Lagos, which is present day Nigeria, and traveled northwest to Abeokuta, where he met with Delany, a journalist, political activist, and graduate of Harvard Medical School. Acting in their capacity as commissioners of the Niger Valley Exploring Party, Delany and Campbell concluded a treaty with the king and chiefs of the Egba, giving them the right to establish settlements in the Egba territory. A pilgrimage to my motherland, an account of a journey among the Egbas and Yorubas of Central Africa, is Campbell's account of the expedition and includes descriptions of Abel Kuta ethnographic material and the text of the treaty E and Delany negotiated. The treaty ran into political resistance among the Egba and was never implemented. But Campbell did immigrate to Africa with his wife and four children. He settled in Lagos in 1862, where he founded and published the newspaper, The Anglo-African, and was involved in numerous commercial, civic and scientific ventures that contributed to the early development of the British colony of Lagos. So you may want to look into Robert Campbell and who he was. If you want to read it, you don't have to buy it. I have the link. I can send that to you, but you will see a lot of uh, interesting things there. Oh, they're experiencing technical difficulties. But anyway, you can... Oh, it's so tiring going page to page. I wish there was a way to export this into... Oh, yeah, 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 you can. Uh, well, I suppose it would just be that page. Mm. <laughs> they are safeguarding. There must be a way to download it. Um, there must be a way to download it as a PDF. I suppose I'll figure it out some other time. But you can, I can give you the link. You can read it for free here. Unnecessary word loaning is very dangerous because... Some people did find Yariba in uh, 
not Samuel Lajari Crowder's dictionary, but a dictionary that came after. And they thought, well, since it's in this dictionary, and it looks like what they wrote is Yoruba, then that is what it means. But word learning is the source of that confusion for the the person. I'm trying not to be insulted. <laughs> the person who found it and began to spread the rubbish. That was probably where they found it. Again, word learning can be very dangerous. This is the first dictionary that Samuel Ajayi Crowder published. I have it here. Um, I didn't get the original and written copy. I just got the, I just have the published version, which I suppose would be the perfected version of the and written one, but basically, um, or the typed one and written and then typed and then printed like this. Um, you can see that there's no mention of Yoruba or Yoba here. Again, there are a lot of borrowed words in Samuel Ajayi Crowther's dictionary. There's Wala, there's Adura, there's all these borrowed words that it did not take the time or probably care enough to note. It did note it here, good, but this is like one of 50 borrowed words that it did not indicate that are borrowed and put the the right words in for you know it did not document the right yoruba words it documented a lot of the borrowed words which is a cause of a confusion however yoruba is not defining yoruba as bad deceitful people and all that crap is not in his dictionary the one that it put this is the dictionary that he published the only one in fact and there's nothing like that here i'll show you so this is the dictionary as you can see uh compiled by reverend ajayi crowder 1852 this is it if you come to the yo section there's no mention of yoba or yoruba see yo there's no mention of yoruba or yoba there so People are not getting it from the Samuel Ajayi Crowther dictionary. They are getting it from the CMS dictionary that was published in the 1900s, 1913. The first dictionary was compared by Ajayi Crowther in 1843. I've showed you that one. I don't know. I could not, as much as I searched, which is unnecessary searching because I didn't need it. This one is, I've heard, is really close to the one that was published in 1911 by Reverend Showande. I could not find it. I would have to go to maybe Kennedy K Library or something to ask when I get home. But I couldn't find it online anyway. Uh, but this one is sort of like the s second or third, let's just say third, because of show and this version let's just say the third official dictionary and that is where people are getting these from <laughs> this yoba this is not yoruba or yoba this is yoba and i'll show you how this came to be again unnecessary word learning unnecessary unnecessary word learning, word learning could very well be one major factor that would god forbid be the death of this language or the complete devolution of this language i'll show you that dictionary that uh, 1913 dictionary and where it is so this is the cms dictionary and this is where yoba is there a lie i'll show you this is the cms dictionary where's the see a dictionary of the yoruba people cms and this is where people are getting yoba from but it has nothing to do with Yoruba. Let's show you. Yoruba. This is where they're getting it from. <laughs> so, but I'll show you how the how Yoruba came to be added. Again, Wala is not a Yoruba word. It's in the dictionary. Adura is not a Yoruba word. It's there. Adura. Ama. You know, all these unnecessarily borrowed words are there. You know, and they are not indicated that they are borrowed from Arabic, from 
Alsa from as we began to interact we began to also infuse this borrowed words or loaned words in a, not that we did not have words for them but we began to use the loaned words so much so that there's a significant number of our own words that we've forgotten the original names for and the reason why of course they would have had original names is because they existed before we ever came into contact with the people who speak the language that we got the borrowed words from but only a few people remember what's alubosa maybe only even the own door you know know that alade is what we called albosa before we began to say albazal as a result of the fulani traders and scholars and islamic clerics coming into present day nigeria and the the nonsense that that came with historically speaking so you know when you don't know your own words again i've highlighted everything that could have brought us to this point there's no need to overemphasize but again you know all these words yaruba is what became yaruba Yoruba is what became Yoba. <laughs> when we began to interact with Yausa and they would say Yaruba, Yaruba, which would be something like, oh, okay, maybe a liar or some. Perhaps maybe they were not necessarily calling us that, maybe among themselves or something, or they began to use it in communication with us. We picked it up, we knew what it meant. And we began to say it too in the 1800s. So you are, you would notice that it's not in Ajayi Crowther's dictionary because at that point it was clear that it wasn't a Yoruba word. It wasn't one of the words that he felt like he needed to add. It was the CMS um, team, bookshop people, uh, not bookshop, the CMS people, Church Missionary Society or something, I don't know, <laughs> that put this because we had begun to say it a lot yaruba became yaruba yaruba because we like to shrink words so much as yoruba people we like to combine words and shrink words became yoba the yoba yoba yaruba nyo became yaruba ni wano yaruba ni wano god shrunk down and it became yoba ni wano so that yoba is different from yoba or Yoruba, but unnecessary word loaning and unnecessarily adding words to your own vocabulary. This is what it does to you. It would do something. It would do something similar to this in the future as well. If care is not take, taken, if we don't put these things into consideration, the devolution of this language is being contributed to significantly by unnecessary word loaning. There is one, the bilingualism aspect. It has its advantages, but it has its disadvantages too. You know, depending on how you look at it, you have less time to develop your own language when you're working in a foreign language, you are learning in a foreign language, your teacher is beating you in class for speaking your own language, your native language to your friend. There was a time when, I don't know, I think even until my generation where you had to pay like one pound or something or maybe one kobo or something for speaking <laughs> maybe one shilling or something i don't remember for speaking yoruba in in a lot of public schools they'll make you pay for speaking yoruba in class you know unnecessary that aside let's even put that aside let's say that okay it's the past let's forget about the pay it's still happening by the way but let's not even forget about it the the devolution of the language uh, will be caused by one the now a lot of people cannot even say a complete statement in yoruba without infusing at least one english word or without thinking about it you know so by but mainly what unnecessary word learning when you've learned so many words You'll be convinced of anything. If, this, if they say that you came from the Middle East, you will believe that you came from the Middle East. If they say that you came from this somebody that seems scientifically unlikely, you would genuinely believe it because 
one your language has been diluted so much the way that i will speak yoruba now is different from the way that obatala would have spoken yoruba you know in his human incarnation the way that oshun would have spoken yoruba in a human the way that in yamokbo this was the on, this was the only language that they really really spoke so that they spoke in fact so they have a a real old on the language and they were able to play with it and they were able to build upon it they were able to develop it it was able to evolve but as a result of unnecessary word learning and this unnecessary in feels not being able to say your well you know the language is devolving People are now having to reteach themselves to speak Yoruba well, <laughs> that they don't even have time for the evolution of the language or, you know, so yeah, let's, let's break it down, <laughs> shall we? We've gotten to the last section. Now that we've, which I find even more important than this part that we've analyzed how we got here as a people, because Ya banza la won la won o iyan won to gbagbo o ya banza la won amo nkan ti yoruba je gogan oni mo fe fi won yi what yoruba is i like to break down yoruba yoruba is yoruba <laughs> yoruba these three words are combined to form yoruba when i wanted to there's nothing that gives you anything concrete. Ya yeah, banza, ya. Yeah, I couldn't find anything really that was of no, worthy of note online. So what I had to do was spiritually connect <laughs> to it. I had to meditate on it, and I had to look at it for what it is instead of overthinking it. Also, I had to consider that again, noting that the way that we speak Yoruba now is not the way that it was spoken. At a point, there was a lot more flexibility rather than the rigidity that is now being observed in the language. And oh, they played a lot with words. <laughs> the, this, the, uh, my mom was telling me one recently about the fact that we're losing the act of saying things <laughs> um, without actually saying them. Uh, you're, there, w there's this not not a no, not a no. We we used to be able to <laughs> say things while meaning something completely different and the person that you're talking to will get it you know um i think it was our old grandmother that that told her of this one that uh um there were two there was a father and their child living alone at a place and the father was cooking beans, told the son to supervise it, that I was, it was going to get fresh air outside. So <laughs> he sat, Baba Joko Sibi, all day. Nibi Wajule. The father sat in front of the house and he received the visitor. The father had told the son that once the beans is done, tell me so that we can eat. But the child was smart enough to know that that was the only thing that they had. It wasn't polite for them to eat, um... <laughs> without first dismissing the visitor if they know that is they are not going to give him part of the meal so he was thinking how do i tell my father one me let's talk about did not only at the at the i can't say that the beans is done is cooked because <laughs> now we, the meal for two would have to become meal a meal for three and would be short rationed and he said um Baba me, so full of my love, you in law. So full of my love, you in law. The father immediately knew. So full of my love, you in law means so full of said is older than you. What does that have to do with beans? Nothing. <laughs> but the father knew that what he was saying was <laughs> the beans is done because of what they had said before. And the father said, 
Olorun ju mi lo. Na ogun le baba re o je so be. <laughs> na ogun le baba re o je so be. <laughs> um uh what he was saying there and if you're again there's, there's literal communication and there's intuitive communication the child intuitively knew <laughs> that the father was saying no gunle babare o je so pe the father said be kale <laughs> put it down um Tofulu can never even Tofulu's father cannot say that again that has nothing that has nothing to do with the beans but the man was saying put it down <laughs> um <laughs> and the, he said uh Abuku to fi komi oni tutu mumbo wa ba. Abuku to fi komi oni tutu. It was saying, um, bu, <laughs> ko buku, uh, bu, jako ku, ma jako tutu, mumbo wa ba. <laughs> Abuku to fi komi oni tutu mumbo wa ba. Bu, jako ku, ma jakite mi tutu mumbo wa ba. And the son knew, and they were able to communicate that way without the visitor even knowing what they were talking. The the man was asking, "Talon je tunfulu?" And they were able to change the topic. But the the father and the son were able to communicate. There's a lot. Again, the devolution of a language and a culture. There's so much that we've lost already, and there's so much that is likely to be lost as a result of the obvious factors but if we know ourselves well enough that instead of putting so much focus on cramming what happened to nebuchadnezzar and feeling proud in as if it would ever be useful for you <laughs> in your life cra cramming what happened to daniel and boasting in it as if that's some real knowledge that would have that would and you would say, oh, pray for Nigeria or pray for... Do Nigerians even know themselves? Emba wan... Omo mo nebukadneza. Emba wan lo. Itan baban la baba wan. E kwa ti yin sile. A wan fofun gbe mu. E fofun. E tun wa gbe mu. You're competing with some other people's lineage with them while ignoring your own. And you want to develop. And you're saying, pray for... We've lost so much and we're likely to lose even more, you know. Yoruba, Yoruba is Yoruba. Yo is an adverb. Remember, the way that we talk now is slightly different from how they spoke back then when the, the only language that they spoke was Yoruba. The language was flexible. They used adjectives in place of nouns. They used adverbs in place of nouns. They used, you know... It was a lot more flexible and different. Don't forget this word. When I connected this, the knowing this particular set of people as the as the Yoruba people is over three thousand years old at the very minimum from what I saw. So it's not a new word. It's a very very old word. Yo is an adverb for brightly, and it can stand in place of its related now which is light yo ru that one has not changed well it has a money more tendencies but the meaning here has not changed it could be to carry or to sustain or to bear on the head so if you say be that one is to carry or lift with the hand if you say fa that one is to pull but if you say ru that is to carry or sustain or bear on the head it could also be lean as in or but that doesn't apply here the last one the last word is ba ba is to meet or find at a place or in a situation the reason it sounds like ba is because of the domi compatibility theory if me comes after do it sounds like me if do comes after me it sounds like do I have a video where I've explained it. I'll link it for you to see. But anyway, ba is the word. It's to meet or find at a place or in a situation. Mobawo, I met them there. I met them in that state. I met, or I met them at that place. Moba, well, I met the, at a place is insinuated, right? It's inferred. I met them there. 
back to meet or find at a place it could also be in a different context it could also be with or together it could also be a conditional indicator timo bajel if i should eat you know so it would be shall should would whatever so that's what ba is but this is the meaning that applies here this one's won't make logical sense this is what applies here which is meet or find at a place or in a situation you can write yo like this you can also write it like this people tend to to write yo like this when they are trying to be more emphatic or be sarcastic or for mockery or very expressive in other yo <laughs> we say that so if you're even going to write that you you write yo you more but this is the word yo so if you see this if you see another another oh oh if you see another oh and another oh it's just putting more emphasis or you know let's say somebody bleached in the case of sarcasm or mockery let's say somebody bleached their skin to the point where they're almost not recognizable you could say le want tan yo la tokan e tan yo la e se want tan yo see me by you're saying ah why are you so you're blinding my eyes you're you're referring to the excessive bleaching you know so that's just one thing to keep in mind but if you put the words together yo would be would indicate the ones who shine brightly again yo tan ba ru eru sorry don wa bi to ma tedo si don wa bi to ma gbe if a person puts a load on their head and they are looking for where to settle to wa ri bi ti na ti to yo lo kan to jo bi bi to jo bi ta won eyan gbe bi mo se ri re o to jo bi ta won eyan gbe to wa lo ba won to lo n gbe pelu won to lo tedo sodo won yoruba le eyan ma pe won the people that were first identified as yoruba people the how the person or the people that gave them that name gave them that name because of that experience won ru eru won ri bi ti na ti ngba tan wa bi ton ma tedo si ton ma gbe ton ma pe ni lu ti won won ri bi ti na ti tan yo lo kan won wa lo ba won won bere si ni gbe pelu won won dara po mo won gbogbo won bere si ni je yoruba bi oruko ise waye niyan it's a very very old sentence statement that has been shrunk into one word the ones with the light that one carries load well it's implied if it's so heavy if it's not light of course if it is this light i won't have to put well i can but it suggests property load that one carries load to meet inatan yo eru eru lo ba won ebere si ni gbe pelu won dara po mo won lo se nje yoruba ni gbogun won se jo nje yoruba yoruba that is how it was that 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 is how the name came to be en lo eri bi ti na ti tan yo eri pa won eyan ma gbe bi e wa lo ba won e wa mo won si yoruba gbogun yin wa jo nje yoruba that was how the name came to be it's a very 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 old sentence and the people that bore the identity yoruba it's millenniums old so don't let anybody tell you rubbish look into what the word is in and of it is is it not crystal clear in fact well maybe it's not crystal clear <laughs> maybe now i see that it is crystal clear but maybe at first i can understand why yeah i have to be empathetic <laughs> the ones with the light that one carries loads to me what that signifies basically in layman's language in a different language dweller inhabitant native or resident the way that we talk less so now than the way that we did back then was like highly metaphorical highly poetic highly proverbial it was so rich you know and anything could be a metaphor for anything they use this as a metaphor for dweller just to express d- what you would now call dweller or inhabitant or native or resident the people that you found at a place when you were looking for a place to settle in you know the people with the light that you found that you went to meet and you and they welcomed you and you began to reside with them it's just dweller 
expressed or inhabitant expressed or native or resident expressed. So that's, that's what the word is. When you shorten Yoruba, you get Yoba without a doubt. Yoba, Yoba. However, um, I would like us to play with it, <laughs> to just have fun with it. It's harmonic and it's fun. Yoba, Yoba. <laughs> Let's see if it even Yo can Yoba can retain the same meaning as Yoruba. So, is there a problem with shorten, sh uh, shortening the word? No, we know for sure without a doubt that Yoruba became, because we like to shrink like that, Yoruba became Yoba. However, let's see if, if we spread Yoruba out as if it were a separate sentence, if it would make sense. Yo, assuming Yo is the nickname of a person or being used to describe a person and O is a negator, which would be do or did not, Ba is meet or find, then Yoba would be Yo did not meet somebody or something but that wouldn't make sense. that wouldn't make sense right because again this is this is unnecessary you can stop watching at this point <laughs> if you consider this a waste of your time but i'm just exploring yo did not mean it this would not make sense let's look at yo oba in the just so you can see how homonymic and fun it is that you can say one thing and you it could mean like seven different things. If you say yo or ba, you might be saying something like yo should have o. O ba can be should. Yo o ba jeon, yo should eat. Yo o ba jeon, idu mi o ba, yo, yo ba jeon, yo should eat. Or yo ba, wa, yo would have come. This is just, there's no Yoruba person that is yo, but knowing what yoruba was like three thousand four thousand years before now you it's they played a, a lot with the language so we're just assuming that this is the nickname of a person let's say you should or you would this is another incomplete incomplete sentence would it make sense you know but yoba even if treated like an independent word can still carry the same meaning as yoruba and this is why I've said so. Yo, o, ba. Yo, o, ba. Yo, the o here can be a noun maker for the thing that is. This is this is how homonymic and fun the language is. The thing that is, you know, meet or find at a place. Yo, the light that is met or found at a place. So the ones with the light or the light or the ones with the light, depending on the context, that are met or found at a place, which will still be dweller or inhabitant or native, you know. So the ones with the light that are met or found at a place, Yoba. <laughs> so, you know, fun, homonymic, but yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, I'll probably put the links in the description but if nobody asks for it I probably won't but if you ask for it i will put it in the description all the links to the AUSA resources in case you're also interested in learning AUSA and um i have i think i have a fulani self-learn resource here as well i have for some languages and i can provide links to them and the documents you know but that is what it is. Don't let anybody, it's Yoruba today. It can be something else tomorrow. Don't let anybody confuse you and tell you rubbish. Know yourself so that you can, <laughs> so that you won't be gullible enough to believe anything. Like I said, I don't see any other tribe that would just believe rubbish, but I suppose, <laughs> yikes, <laughs> we need to do better. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now.